everybody. It's Carm here. I'm coming to you on a late Monday afternoon. I'm taking a little break from doing some yard work. I've been, been at it on and off since about noon or so. And I uh, just wanted to come on and share, uh, talk about an, an old touchstone in the collection. I'd started a series called Touchstone Touchstones a while back, and I think I only did a couple of them. So I want to get back into that in general. And I have a few things lined up to uh, to show on and off, you know, was in addition to other things. And uh, I showed this recently on CD, like a couple of videos ago, two, three videos ago. Uh, Russ Freeman Nocturnal Playground from uh, 1986, Brainchild Records. It's recorded in late uh, late '85. Probably best known as uh, you know, the founder. Lady musical director of the Rippingtons, a band that's still uh, is still around to this day. Plays electric and acoustic guitars and guitar synthesizer. Featured very heavily on the album. Uh, emulator two, a keyboard bass, Lin 9000 programming. Uh, Brandon Fields on el alto sax, and Steve Reed on percussion, among others. You know, later, he later formed the Rippingtons either you know, right around this time or the following year. In a way, kind of an outgrowth of this. But, um, but what's really significant for me about this album was, uh, I, I mentioned WNUA, uh, which is our local, one of our local stations. Uh, it ran from about 1987 to the late 2000s, like 09 or, no, 09 or 2010. And it went off the air. But um, I had first heard the station, I distinctly remember at my aunt's house, uh, right around this time of year, uh, 30 years ago. It was one of the spring holidays in uh, 1988, maybe Easter or Mother's Day. And I remember hearing it and it was just, something about it really struck me. Now, at that time I was, 12, I was a 12 year old sixth grader. And I think what I was lis listening to at the time was actually another station called WGCI which was uh, basically like a soul R&B, really kind of like an adult contemporary version of that from what I remember. Definitely wasn't aimed at 12-year-olds. Uh, of course, this wasn't either, but something about hearing, and by the way, most of this album, I'd say, out of the eight songs, at least five of them I remember hearing on the radio on that station, on NUA, you know, at that time and for years afterwards. But there was something about what I was hearing that just uh, struck me in a, just a different way. Uh, it was primarily instrumental, um, all instrumental in the case of this album. But I didn't get any feeling that the, the lyrics were missing or it was almost like they had kind of gotten out of the way in a sense and I could really hear to the essence of the music. And uh, maybe the fact that there was a lot of you know, synthesizer and keyboards which I'd always had a, a feel for since I could remember, since I was little, you know, when I when I first knew what they were. And of course, being that it's, you know, pretty heavily on this album, you know, featured, although he's playing a lot of it through his guitar, which, you know, if he hadn't known that in the notes, you'd probably think it was keyboards, at least, you know, some of it. But uh, yeah, it just kind of led the way towards so many things I got into in later years. Even music that's much different than this, like you know, avant-garde, experimental, electronic, uh, free jazz, all kinds of jazz, um, uh, contemporary classical, and uh, even in recent years, getting into like library music and stuff that's uh, straight out Muzak, I guess you could say, you know, like um, um, and the kind of stuff that used to play in department stores, you know, like Kmart and you know the stuff that was actually like ready-made music, you know, for those. Uh, uh, settings and uh, you know this is this for me kind of ties all of that stuff together that I've that's ensued over the last you know 30 years um, you know and even getting into like Vangelis and Tangerine Dream and again a lot of other uh, uh, jazz players even ECM although when you hear this music superficially you might not find the connection but um, for me the connection is there since it, it was something ooh, heavy screeching um, you know, since it was there in the beginning, I'd, I'd heard these and it just, uh, yeah, it just, it struck me right away um, what he was doing. I've been playing pretty light in the background and I've got the player kind of a little further on in the yard. It's also rush hour. But, um, 
yeah, it just a really, uh, it really just uh, it pointed the way towards, uh, you know, so much that came afterwards. Uh, if you could hear it or not, you know, it's, you know, it's quite melodic and very uh, kind of pleasant and, and easygoing sounding. It's not, you know, what you would call overtly challenging music in the sense that, you know, it's not nowhere near avant-garde or anything. But uh, again, if you're if you're curious about, you know, if you're not really into instrumental music, but you're curious about something that's more accessible that could lead you, you know, from wherever you're at, you know, something that's a little more easily digestible, this is, you know, a good place to start with that sort of thing. And again, like the ripping tins and a lot of the stuff that, uh, you know, came out at that time, you know, mid '80s to the early '90s, and. Uh, yeah, I feel like there's so much I could say about this, but uh, and I've listened to it for so long. I mean, you know, all these years, I've enjoyed it. I don't think I actually picked up this album though until about maybe summer of '92. I'm thinking when I was between uh, uh, going into junior year of high school, I'd actually picked up a couple of Rippingtons before this one, but I had known this album well enough from you know from being most of it being played on the radio that I almost kind of felt like I had it <laughs> already. Oh, here's the label. I think I have one or two other CDs on this label from different artists, but I don't think it was very, um, I think it was rather short-lived, you know, like a lot of labels of the time, stuff that featured instrumental music in the 80s and 90s, you know, a lot of them are just um, unfortunately forgotten, but uh, at least by the general, you know, general listening audience, but uh, there's a few of us uh, diehards, I guess, who are still, uh, you know, still, uh, Searching it, seeking these things out. So yeah, Russ Freeman, uh, Nocturnal Playground. A very important early, you know, just the music in general was very important for me early on. And uh, yeah, still enjoy it to this day. And uh, you know, you know a, lot of, a lot of fond memories associated with this and uh, you know, so much that's related to it. So uh, yeah, def we'll definitely check it out. In fact, I think if you even look up, you know, look up the name and uh, on the album on YouTube, you might come across. Uh, I think KJC Music has featured a few, uh, a few songs off the album. And you might be able to even find it in full if you're curious. But uh, yeah, great stuff. Still love it. And then right down to the cover. A cover of photography by Lonnie Spector. So, yeah, very cool. So yeah, just wanted to come on and share that real quick. And again, want to do want to do more of these, just featuring one album that's been, uh, you know, just important in one way or another. And uh, yeah, it all leads, you know, all leads somewhere. You know, it's like a lot of, I think you all know from whatever you're into, you know, there's all these kind of tributaries that go from, you know, whatever. If you're if you're into like a certain genre over others, you know, you could always find a link from one to another, no matter how far apart they are. You could, you know. Just depending on your own listening and your own sensibility and where you're, where you're willing to go, where you're willing to let it to, to lead you to go, I guess. So, I don't know. <laughs> I've been out here for quite a while, out in the sun for a while, so I'm probably not making much sense anymore. Any, anymore. But um, yeah, so uh, yeah, at some point I'll come on. Hopefully later in the week I'll have another one to show as, as well as some other things. Still working on getting some things together for artist profiles when I can. And when there's time, you know, it's, uh, the schedule's kind of up and down right now, so I don't even know when I'll be home, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So hope we're all well, and uh, it's uh, pretty warm here today. It's about 80 degrees, so the spring's uh, most certainly here. So, till the next one. Peace, love, and joy.